Ted, sir. Your father's angry with you, sir. Good old Digby. Can't you do something about it, sir? You're a fine young man. You have everything. Wealth, good looks. Everything, sir, except perhaps a little common sense. Oh, my head. Be a good scout and get me something, will you, Digby? Yes, I've got it, sir. Here it is. Hey, have you seen a horse around here somewhere? Excuse me, I brought a horse up here last night. Don't you worry about that, sir. The horse has been dealt with. You think of everything, Digby. Oh, sir. Your father is very angry with you. He wants to see you immediately at the office. What a father. He always wants me when it isn't convenient. Never have a father if you can help it, Digby. No, sir. They're a nuisance. What, sir? Yes, Miss Peters. Mr. Dentorini from the Morocco Club to see you, sir. Oh, the Morocco Club. Send him in. Morning, Mr. Brown. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but you see, last night I... You let my son run up another bill at your club, and you think that I'll pay. Well, I think you will. You're a reasonable man, Mr. Brown. I guess this little itemized statement will explain everything. What's all this? Well, you see, last night, young Mr. Brown uh, was demonstrating a forward pass to some of his guests, and he kind of fumbled bad. You know how it is. So I had to persuade him to leave. In other words, you kicked him out. Yeah, I did after he got tough. Look at that. My son did that? Yeah, he sure did. Never thought he had it in him. Uh, my doctor's plenty worried about it. And let me tell you something. That kind of stuff hurts business. Let's say for five grand, it never happened. I'm not charging you a cent for the shiner either, and believe me, that's worth five grand by itself. You cut those figures in half, and you may stand some chance to collect. Uh, make it three hundred. Two hundred and sixty dollars, Mr. Dentorini. Take it or leave it. Uh, give it to me. That's more like it. Now get out. And if you ever come around here again, remember that I too have ways of putting on the pressure. Hi. Pilot Brown, Jr., circling field. Is it safe to land? Bad crosswind. Field bumpy. Come in easy. I take it all is not well. All is not well, and you get it. Thanks. I'll call for it later. Miss Peters. Yes, sir? Locate my son right away. Here he is, sir. Just came in. I want to see him at once. Thanks, Sister Double Cross. Don't mention it. If I come flying through this door, catch me. Hi, Dad. How are you? Do you want to see me? Sit down. Sorry, I'm late, Dad. I had some trouble with a car. I thought you'd take him to driving a milk wagon. Milk wagon? Oh, that! Wasn't that funny? <laughs> yes. Just about as funny as that football game of yours at the Morocco Club. That was simply a scream, Dad. You should have been there. Never had so much fun in all my life. Uh, who told you about it? I just had a play-by-play -play description from Mr. Dentorini. He presented me with the bill. Bill? Oh, yes, yeah, just a bill. What bill? Perhaps you'd like to read all about it. That's something to make any father proud. Making the front page in a vulgar, drunken brawl. Oh, listen, Dad. You listen to me. I've paid for your drunken bouts for the last time. I was always hoping that you'd come to your senses and settle down. But I can see now that you haven't one shred of decency or self-respect in you. Now, wait a minute. I'm through with you. I'm going to make it impossible for you to go on disgracing the family name. I'm closing all your accounts and cutting off your allowance. Not another cent do you get from me. Well, you can't do that. That money's mine. You know Mother left it to me. Your mother also left a will appointing me as sole executor. And if you had one iota of self-respect, you wouldn't be what you are now. But that doesn't give you the right to take everything away from me. No. Well, that's just what I'm going to do. Just because I want to lead my own life and be free. Free. Yes, son. Free to do as you please from now on. Well, you're the boss of the outfit, Dad. I guess I have to take my medicine whether I like it or not. One more thing. I think you'll find it too disagreeable living in the same house with such a father. So you'd better make your arrangements accordingly. 
kicked out, huh? I wouldn't say that. Why not call it an experiment in freedom? Thanks, Dad. We might have parted under better terms, but that's the way you want it, okay. Hi there, Ted Brown. Meet you wherever I go. Have a little drink? Oh, no, no, and think of it. Never indulge. Just one little drink, huh? Just one. Wonderful to be so near heaven. One. doing here? Come on, that doesn't matter. Say, where have I seen that face before? This face? Oh, Playboy Ted Brown. Yes. See, I like you. You're a pretty girl. I'm glad you do. Well, I guess I'll be stepping along. Goodbye. Oh, no, no, don't leave me. I couldn't take care of myself, not in this condition. Well, I have to have somebody to talk to. I want to tell you the story of my life. I couldn't stand it. I'll take you out of this park, young man. Then you've got to do the best you can. Oh, don't say that. That's what my father always says. Let me take you out. I can't seem to navigate very well. I want to go in all directions at the same time. You ever feel like that, darling? Darling? Why did you call me that? That's what you are. <gasps> Whoops. I wish this ground would stay put. Tell me, am I so obnoxious? Yes, I am. That's right. But you ought to see me when I'm sober. Perfectly fascinating. Watch. You tell me what you're trying to do now. Nothing like water to sober a man up. Do I have to save you again? Please. Give me your hand. Don't get me wet. What an idiot. Don't call me names. This is critical. Get out of here. Here comes a policeman. What's going on around here? What are you doing in that pool? I'm sorry, officer. He just, uh, slipped in. Uh, you're a sight for sore eyes, you are. Am I? So I am. <laughs> you better take him home right away, lady. He's pretty damp. But I, uh... Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. You want me to help you with him? Uh, no, thanks. I, I can manage him. Come, dear. Wait. My car. Oh, of course. I forgot. Hey, hey. You better let the missus drive. <laughs> Don't worry, officer. She will. Now give me the keys. And don't sit too close to me with those dripping clothes. My, you're a masterful person. And now that 
I've saved you from falling over a cliff, falling into a pond, and falling into the hands of the police, I think I've done my duty. Where do you live? Nowhere. Honest. My dear old father turned me out. Come on, where is your home? I told you. <gasps> Getting a cold? No, pneumonia. Only the good die young. Oh. Yes, my dear old father's disgusted with me. Cut me off just like that. Doesn't want me around. Say, you got a handkerchief? You'll find one in my purse. Well, if you haven't any place to go to, I suppose I've got to take you to my room and ring you out. Why not? Can't you save me just once more? I guess one good turn does deserve another. What's that? Maybe I didn't do all the saving today. <sighs> say, Lifesaver, what did you say your name was? I don't think I got it. Dale Carter. Dale Carter. Hey, wasn't that your picture I saw in the paper with mine today? Forget it. But wait a minute. I said forget it. <gasps> yes, but... Tall, damp, and handsome, take off those clothes. We've got to make you dry and decent. Think you can do it? I mean, the decent part. Come on, I've got to get you out of here before my landlady discovers you. Get in there and let me have the rest of that outfit. Okay, boss. If, if I were your boss, you'd never be in such a condition. Say, that's an idea. What? This boss business. Is this a proposal, sir? Sort of. I couldn't consider it, even if I were in your condition, sir. Have a heart. Here you are, miss. You'll find a quilt in there to drape yourself in. I don't need it. Oh, and the aspirins are in the top drawer. Here. Say, I still don't believe that touching line about your not having a home. Lady, that was no line. I haven't any more home than a rabbit. And less sense. He digs himself one. Don't you think this frock is just darling? Hootman! Ted Brown, don't you dare get that dress wet. It belongs to my roommate. Why, Dale Carter, how could you? Somebody must have been awfully fond of children to let you grow up. Say, Dale Carter, I'd like to make you a proposition. Go ahead, but you won't get anywhere with it. No kidding, I'm serious. Oh, well, then we'd better call a doctor. Stop counting, will you? I've got an idea that's a honey. Will you marry me? Not for $50,000. Oh, come on, be reasonable. We couldn't get more than $20,000 between us. What are you talking about? Now, listen closely. Here's the plot. Boy, it's a honey. Cy and a proud old family is lured into matrimony by beautiful but... Nothing personal in this questionable young woman with a lurid past. Say... Shut up till I'm finished. Now, the aforesaid science father is a narrow-minded so-and-so. And rather than have the proud old name dragged through the mire, again, nothing personal, he buys this scheming female off. Then, now we come to the climax. She splits the loot 50-50 with her newly acquired husband, and they go their separate ways. Swell, what? I see I should have let you fall off that cliff. What's wrong with the idea? Don't you think it would be more fun with guns and a stagecoach? Even you couldn't do that to your own father. I inherited that money from my mother. It's mine. And you think your father would fall for a stunt like that? Like a ton of bricks. You know what would happen if I took you home to Dad and told him we were married? Mm. You know what he'd say? No, what? Married to a notorious woman. No son of mine could forget the honor due the family name. Then, I suppose, I'm expected to throw him some gentle little hint like, well, old-timer, what's it worth to you to get rid of me? That's it. Then you'll burt out, what's your price? Then you'll burt out shyly, shyly like, oh, about uh, 25 grand. Then I suppose I coyly pocket the money, chuck father under the chin, and... Then we scram. What do you think of the idea? Great, huh? I hate men like you. There's never been a man like me. Oh, get out of here. Come on. Get in there. Get, get your things. 
Oh. Hope I ain't interrupting. I just wanted to remind you. I've been talking things over with my husband. I can't see you now, Mrs. Murphy. I gotta have the rest of that rent money, see? I haven't got it. Listen, I seen that young fella come up. He's got a swell car outside. You get out of here, get out. You pay up or you'll get out. And that's right. I'm sorry. Have you ever had life kick you so hard that you no longer cared? Yes, I... Okay. I accept that deal. Boy, that's marvelous. But it's only a business deal. Understand? Now, you get in that outfit that I just had on and we'll sense the deal. Okay, okay. I'll be ready. He's gone. He must have been fed up with my playing. Oh, I'm quite sure not, sir. You play beautifully. Oh, nonsense. If I may be permitted to recite, sir, your music hath charms to soothe the breast of aching cares and give it rest. <laughs> and how does Mr. Brown like your poetry? Oh, he doesn't like it, sir. Every time I recite a line, he fires me. Mm, that's terrible. I can't help it, sir. You can understand, Mr. Winston. You have a poetic soul. I can tell that by your play. It's so unusual to meet a businessman with a real sense of beauty. Well, here we are, married. How does it feel? Terrible. You certainly have a lot of romance in you. Do you think I'll really be able to get away with it? You can't miss. You just follow my routine. <laughs> if your performance is as good as your makeup, it's in the bag. I hope so. For my sake. Don't worry. Here. Hiya, Dad. I want to talk to you. In your present condition, nothing that you could say to me would be of the slightest interest. Dad, I'm afraid I'm married. You're what? Married, you know? Tied up, spliced. Say, what is this? Am I supposed to wait out there all night? Dad, I want you to meet my wife, Dale. Dale, my father. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Oh. <laughs> uh, Dale used to be an artist model, Dad. Pretty tough life. Yes, I can see that. But I don't suppose she could help that. Oh, but you don't get it, Dad. I'm married to her, see? Married. So you said. Show him the marriage certificate. Go ahead. That isn't necessary. My son is quite capable of anything. Well, I, I guess you, you want to talk to Dale alone, so I'll cry. No, I think you'd better stay. I suppose you think I'm not good enough for your son. Well, on the contrary, I think you're much too good for him. But that's beside the point. No man, even if he's sober, could step so completely out of his own environment without coming to grief. You can understand that. <laughs> well, uh, what are you going to do about her? What do you mean? I mean about buying her off. She certainly won't let me go for nothing. That's your problem. I told you that from now on, you're strictly on your own. Say, aren't you walking out on your own, kid? Not at all. I'm giving my son this freedom he's talked so much about. I once had other plans for him. But of course, everyone has the right to choose his own life. But don't you understand? She won't let me go without some settlement. Well, who wants her to let you go? 
I think she's just the girl for you. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, will Shut you? Up. do, Ted. Well, now that you're married, Ted, of course, you'll want your own home. You can let me know where you're located, and I'll have Digby send on your things. Don't bother. You won't hear from me again. Uh, oh, Ted. I couldn't help but overhear a few words from the library. So you're married. Congratulations. Thanks anyway, George. I still consider myself a friend of the family. I'd like to help you, Ted. Don't bother. I'm sorry you feel that way about it. Well, I do. How much did you expect to get from me? Well, you didn't expect me to marry him for nothing, did you? Perhaps not. So you didn't marry him for love. Say, what do you think I am? Well, we'd better not go into that. You stand there so satisfied with yourself and pass a buck to him. I hate all you wealthy hypocrites. You don't like my kind, do you? Well, I don't like your kind either. Wait a moment, young woman. What for? You know, you're beginning to interest me. That's a break. So you think I failed as a father? And how? Well, tell me. Do you think that you could do a better job with him? Well, I certainly couldn't do worse. Get him to uh, cut out his drinking, settle down, and go to work? You don't want much. Think you could? Yes. If I felt it worth my while. What would make it worth your while? Oh, about 10,000. 10,000? That's a pretty high figure. Not for that job. It's a deal. Oh, there's one more thing. I'd prefer that my son should not know of this arrangement between us. Okay. But wait a minute, don't sign it yet. When I'm through with this job, I want a quick and painless divorce. I took the divorce for granted. Of course, you'll resume your maiden name. With pleasure. Brown doesn't suit my complexion. Well, Mrs. Brown, I sincerely hope this works out. Father, I surely hope it does. <laughs> Boy, how I hate redheads. I thought they were your favorite type. We do love each other, don't we? Passionately, deliriously. Just think, dearest, this is our honeymoon. Isn't it wonderful? Horse feathers. Why, Ted Brown, you unromantic scoundrel. Well, I can't say that I blame you much. I guess I'm a pretty hopeless case. Well, you're not exactly a brilliant success, but maybe we can do something about it. We? You mean you'll really stick around for a while? Perhaps. Attention all motorists using the Valley Highway. There has been a series of holdups on this road. The Desperados are believed to be operating in a black open car. This is a warning to be on the lookout for them. That car's been following us for some time. Looks like a holdup to me. Don't you worry. Now you get out and hide over there. I'll face them single-handed. Well, blow me down if it isn't Digby himself. How do you do, Mr. Ted? Come on out, Dale. It's only Digby. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Ted? Mrs. Ted? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. But, but why did you do this? Well, so you know, I knew you couldn't take care of yourself. No reflection upon you, of course, Mrs. Ted. But you see, I've known him ever since he was a baby. That couldn't have been very long ago. Did my father send you after us? Oh, no, sir. He knows nothing about it. You see, he dismissed me. I found myself breaking out into poetry again. Well, we can't pay you. We haven't any room. Oh, Mr. Ted, you hurt me. Let him stay. What's the difference? One more on our honeymoon won't hurt. But if you're to stay with us, you're not to spoil Ted. Put your hat on. This is a democracy, and from now on, we're all equal. Remember that. 
You'll make it awfully difficult for him, Mrs. Ted. Then you can't stay with us, Digby. We're all on our own. Very good, Mrs. Ted. What's the big idea? I crave coffee. What about you? No, thanks. I don't like the looks of the dump. I'm particular. Hmm. All right. Well, looks like we're getting back to civilization. Ah, that, sir, uh, reminds me of a little poem. One, please, Sigby, not that... now, huh? So I sent the wife to her brother in California, and now she's all well and strong. I got a letter saying there's a job for me, and she wants me to come there. That's fine. You should have no trouble selling this place. Then you'll be on your way. You see, my cooking, she's not so good. So business is stay the same, not so good. But Mama, oh, how she can cook. She cook like nobody's business. Mm. Got soup, chicken, and sauce, apple pies, and punk. I'll have the same. It's fine state of affairs. Here you are gorging yourself, while poor Digby and I starve outside. I thought the place wasn't grand enough for you. This is Mr. Brown, Mr. Papopoulos. How do you do? Greek? Greek? Why, I was born in Greece. I'll have a cup of coffee. The pleasure, she's all mine. 10, 15, 16, 17. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, six months ago, I was hit by a stop and go ahead driver. So every time I hear that horn, that horn drives me crazy. Oh! Well. Don't touch that horn. Thirty-five, forty, forty-five cents. Behold the sum of my worldly goods. How much have you got? Don't forget, I paid for that marriage license and the wedding ring. Come on, come on. I'm a busy woman. How much? Okay, mercenary female. I've got sixteen cents, and two buttons, a lottery ticket expired, driver's license, and pink slip. My all. Thanks. This will take care of the coffee. And this pink slip, I'll take care of. We may have to eat it before I get a job for you. I know. You hate redheads. <laughs> How'd you know? Listen, Father. <laughs> not touch that horn. I not touch, Papa. You're my flesh and blood. I... <sighs> you know what, Mr. Brown? What? Five years from my life, I give for a machine like that. But that horn, come more dirty, more... Life must be cheap around here. All right, kids, out. Oh, children are such great fun, sir. I often wish you had one or two of your own. You wish I had? Yes, sir. Well, what about you? Oh, me, sir? Yes. I only get my happiness from the happiness of others, sir. Pardon me. You mean that? Absolutely. That grand machine, not the other one? No, the grand machine. Lady, I think you plumb crazy. <laughs> well, Nick is glad for that. Oh, I feel so happy. I bust right inside. Oh, boy, we'll all go to California and see Mama. And we'll see be surprised. Dimitris, come, hurry. No. Louis, Dimitris, come quick. Come. You come too, please, Mr. Brown. Yes. What's all the excitement about? Papa Papadopoulos and all his little brood are about to go west, young man. So what? Has your royal highness decided yet where we go? We don't. So what? We don't go. Here you are, sign this pink slip. Look, if I'm not too inquisitive, might I ask what's going on around here? Big business. You are about to become T. Tunaville Brown Esquire, the big cafe man. All for this little pink piece of paper. Are you crazy? Maybe. Do you expect me to trade my car for that, that pile of junk? Do you think I'm completely nuts? Of course you are. That's why we're here. You have a nerve. Somebody has to have. That pile of junk, as you call it, can support us. <laughs> and that's more than you can do. Oh, yes. Well, I wouldn't be found dead in it. That's an idea. Now you listen to me. That setup means bed, board, and business all in one. 
It's at least a chance, and what have we got to lose? Oh, nothing, nothing at all, except maybe a thousand dollars worth of automobile. Which we can neither eat nor afford to run. Why don't you trade in Digby's jalopy? Oh, nothing would give me greater pleasure, sir. No, Mr. Papadopoulos wants your car, nothing. Besides, I've already settled everything. Now, you listen to me, my little ray of sunshine. I tried one of your ideas, and you didn't find me squawking when it turned sour. How about trying one of mine? Okay, you win. But get this and get it straight. I positively loathe Red. Oh, Oh, boy. Well, pardon me, does that mean you now have a home? That's about it, Digby. Home. Oh, but I'm afraid there isn't going to be enough room for you, Digby. Unless we put a mattress on top of the trolley. Perhaps you can sleep on the counter. <laughs> Don't you worry about me, madam. I'll be quite all right. Home. Ah, what tenderness lies in that name. Be it ever so humble or ever so low, a home remains always a nice place to go. You may travel afar or land or sea. But a dump like this but is not for me. Look, Digby, do me a favor, will you? Certainly. No more poetry. It doesn't agree with me. Oh, well, I'll try to use my influence with myself, sir. Never mind, Digby. <laughs> I think it was lovely. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. You. Well, goodbye, my friends. I send you pizza from California. We'll be crazy to get it. Yeah, where's the music? What is the music? Call them back. Well, that's that. Come on, long face. Let's look over our new estate. Well, look who's here. Hello, pup. Sort of left you flat, huh? <laughs> See what we've inherited? He'll eat us out of room and board. Poor fella, but he hasn't eaten for a week. Don't get sentimental. It doesn't suit you. That's a woman for you. You see what I have to put up with? We men have got to stick together. Oh, it's grand inside, Mr. Ted. So picturesque. I've got some fine ideas for its improvement. Please, Digby, I'm not in the mood. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, you have a dog. Yes, it was left here to console me. Would you mind, Mr. Ted, if I scout round the locality for a while? No, scout as much as you like. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Polly, want a cracker? Look, Ted. What? Food. What a meal for us. Ah, serves you right. Dale Brown, the big idea girl. Well, for crying out loud. What's eating you now? Oh, a first customer. Perhaps we'll make enough to buy a good meal for all of us. What's our first customer going to eat? Oh, never mind. I'll scrape something together. Oh, quick. Hurry, get, a, get an apron for me in the back room. Apron, apron. Who's got the apron? Oh, oh. Hurry, Ted, and get one for yourself, too. Coming right up, boss. Greetings, beloved friends. Greetings. Permit me the pleasure of introducing myself. <laughs> you see before you an intoxicated person. <laughs> A person intoxicated with life. What would you like, sir? Madam, I love beauty. A buttercup. A iridescent drop of the morning's dew. The heavy wine of a woman's smile. And I am filled to bursting. May I have a hot dog or two? Hot dog. Oh, sorry, sir. We seem to be out of hot dogs today. <laughs> well, then, let me have anything at all. See if the Greek left any food in the back room. Quick.
already. Really, madame, it was delicious, especially the French toast. <laughs> Glad you liked it. That will be 75 cents, please. What's that? Oh, my mistake, sir. 70 cents. Madam, you disappoint me. You are so materialistic. I hate money. It's the source of all evil. Cut out that stuff and pay up. <laughs> Madam, really, this is embarrassing. You can't get away with anything like that. Come on and pay up. <laughs> Madam, I never pay. It's beneath me. Good day, madam. Ted! Ted! Ted, come quick! What's the matter? He says he won't pay. <clears throat> My dear sir, let me explain matters. Women are beautiful creatures, but they lack common sense. I have intimated to her that I have no money. I loathe money. The open road is calling. Au revoir. <laughs> Oh. Why didn't you stop him? Uh, you uh, won't find it so funny when your meal time comes around. Oh. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've met. What are you doing? I'm going to the nearest town to hock your watch. Oh, no, no you're not. Yes, I am. Sorry, it's watch. my watch. Get me! No, no, no. Get me that watch. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> What's the big idea? Well, you, you can't blame a fella for trying. Huh. Look! Oh, oh, oh. And here, sir, I have everything for us in our new restaurant. Groceries, ham, bacon, coffee. Why, I can't believe it. We're saved. Yes, sir. And these, madam, are for you. Digby, you're an angel. Oh, I wouldn't say that, madam. Just a practical man. And this is my home. Your home? Yes, madam. You see, I've always wanted to own my own home. And here it is. A pup tent. I put it up myself. Oh, we'll give you a hand. Oh, don't make me laugh, Mr. Brown. Oh, by the way, I believe this is yours. Thank you. Take it from me, Digby. There's nothing like having a big-hearted wife. <laughs> no, sir. I mean, uh, yes, sir. Go away. newlyweds have entered the business world. Their cafe opening today was terrific. Traffic simply surged by. Their two customers ate like a horse and paid off handsomely in gratitude. Didn't you, Pop? By the way, you're eating up all our profits. Listen, Pop, you might ask Mrs. Brown what we're going to call you. Pop, tell Mr. Brown, but I can only think of names that fit him. You might hint to Mrs. Brown, without hurting her feelings too much, that she's an ungrateful, ill-tempered female. Please inform Mr. Brown that I don't agree with him, and I think it's time for him to go. He'll find his pillow and blankets in the north wing, and I'll see him in the morning, I'm afraid. Mm. You know, I'm glad Digby has that pup tent for himself. There's something appealing about having a home of one's own. I'm glad we've got a home, even though it's only this. You know, I think I'm going to like Mary. Let's get this straight once and for all. That marriage of ours was a business deal that fell through, right? Right. We decided to work or starve it out for a while. But that was all. We've got to play according to the rules. Okay, my mistake. Come along, Romeo. Romeo, that's a good name for you, pup. 
Our bed awaits us on the balcony beneath the kindly stars. Very pretty. Sweet dreams. Same to you. Good night, Ted. Good night, Ted. Be sure and close the door after you. I'll put a light in the window for you so you won't be afraid. <laughs> down with pneumonia. Did I make it rain? You wouldn't be surprised. Did I choose to sleep outside? Here, wrap this dry blanket around you and get into bed. One flight up. No, oh, I'll take the upper. You'd break your neck if you tried it. I should think you'd like that. Shoot. Oh, I haven't got a handkerchief. Here, Sneezy, take this. Do you think you can blow your own nose? Will you shut up? It's true. Oh, I suppose I'd better make you some hot tea or you'll die on my hands. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction of saying you outlived me. cure my cold by rubbing lard on my chest. Oh, no, you don't. That stuff smells to high heaven. Now, cut it out, redhead, or I'm going to get good and mad. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, now I'm dead. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> So it is altogether fitting that Mother Nature should have conspired toward this happy turn in their matrimonial adventure. The wind and the rain make him a lonely figure on the desolate porch. Then she invites him in and pretends he has pneumonia. And she proceeds to rub his chest with rancid lard. Imagine, gentlemen, our Mr. Ted submitting to have his chest rubbed with that terrible stuff. <laughs> Then he kisses her, but she doesn't slap him this time. <laughs> Bigby, I suggest that hereafter you try your hand at prose instead of poetry. Oh, I hope I haven't misdirected my talents. <laughs> I think your talents are well directed, Digby. Keep on the job. You know how much Ted means to me. I know, sir. Well, then hurry back to them and see that my instructions are carried out. And if you show them any mercy, I'll fire you. Oh, thank you, sir. Now I can get on with my work. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is a life. A little trolley underneath the bow, a steaming cup, a hamburger, and thou. In the words of our genial host, Omar Brown, the proof of our hamburger is in the wearing. <laughs> oh, if Father could only see me now. I don't think you're good enough for that yet. Meaning what? Tell me, have you ever thought of trying to make a man of yourself? Oh, can't be done. Not with this material. It can be done, Mr. Brown. Now, while Sigby and I are getting ready for business here, you get some life in you and go out and drum up some. Come on, young fellow, on your feet. Well, how? What do you want me to do? A house-to-house -house canvas? Look out there. Practically in our own backyard. Prospective customers working up an appetite for you to cash in on. But how? What do you want me to do? 
Well, you might try to create a little interest in our deluxe hamburgers at the steel mill. Or better yet, do it the hard way. Use your brains, if you have any. You know, I'm beginning to get a little bored with you. Isn't that too bad? You know, I don't think you're so hot yourself. That is, mentally speaking. Ah, but otherwise... I got an idea. Save it. I'm going over to that mill. Dr. Security, number 54920 Local 467. Okay, report to Smith. Call Morton. Local? This local. Social Security number? Social Security card ain't come yet. Okay, report to Smith. Brown's the name, T.J. Full name, Brown? Yes, sir. Theodore John. Social Security number? Well, I haven't one yet, you see. Come on, come on, you're local? Yeah, since yesterday. Same as the other guy. Okay, report to Smith. What's your Social Security number? I'm afraid you're getting too much of a bay window. Mine's all right. Yeah, mine's gone too. Of all the dirty tricks. That's your tough luck, fellas. Yeah, it'll be tough luck for the guy if I find him. I certainly hope you do. Say, buddy, so you know that trolley down the line? Yeah. They serve good meals. It's under new management. I had dinner there the other night. Swell looking dame runs it too. Boy, she's a beauty. Yeah? Yeah. Come on, what are we waiting for? Yeah, yeah. let's go. Yeah. I'm hungry. Bye bye. 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 Bye don't make no difference. Here's your change on your way. Come on. Let go. Oh, say it's a date. You have to be careful with the ladies, pal. You sure pack an awful wallop in those mitts, sister. Seems necessary around here. Yeah. <laughs> Everything ready for the noon rush, Digby? Yes, madam. I just put on the coffee. Happy here, Digby. Oh, it's heaven, madam. Well, uh, I wouldn't exactly say that. Oh, what with Mr. Ted working and our little business doing so nicely. We have such a comfortable little family. <laughs> You've been good to us, Digby. And I want you to know that I appreciate it. Uh, Just think. Ted and I have been married for three months. Mm -hmm. And things have been going so well, haven't they? Ah, uh, divine. By the way, Digby, when is Ted's birthday? Why, it's the... It's the 24th of May. That's next Friday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. It'll give us a chance to celebrate. Whoopee! Oh, pardon my interruption. <laughs> we'll do this party up in grand style. I'll send for my good friend, Peppy Mason, and we'll celebrate at the, uh, the El Tor Cafe. <laughs> Life, the wise men ask. I cannot answer this, but mice and men and cats and hens all bask in love's sweet bliss. How'd you like it, Romeo? 
Oh, you don't like it. But mice and men and cats. <coughs> oh, but mice and men and dogs and hens. How do you like that now? <coughs> I'm so glad you like it. A customer. Go to your room, Romeo. Go on. Hello, Digby. Oh, good evening, Mr. Winston. Where is everybody? Well, it's Mr. Ted's birthday, sir, and they're having a party at the El Toro Cafe. It's a few miles down that road. Well, I'll join them if you don't think I'll be intruding. Oh, on the contrary, sir, I'm sure you'll be a very welcome guest. Good night, Digby. Good night, Mr. Winston. You can come out now, Romeo. Well, we can resume our poetry. Thanks, sir. I see my party. Hello, Ted. Why, it's George Winston. George! He has a nose like a bloodhound. George, this is Miss Mason, Mr. Winston. Huh. Glad to know you, big boy. She's one of my dearest friends. Well, I'm sure she's a perfect friend. But... You don't know the half of it, Mr. Winston. <laughs> Congratulations, Ted. Thanks, George. This occasion calls for champagne. Champagne? A waiter. A couple of bottles of your best and oldest champagne. <laughs> oh. Tell me, uh, have you danced with your wife yet? Of course. Then may I? Why, certainly. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, dear. Men learn not to introduce their wives to their friends. Oh, George is all right. He's an old friend of the family. He's a little too friendly, if you ask me. You look beautiful tonight, Dale. Thank you, kind sir, she said. Why, George is a confirmed bachelor. They got another name for them on Broadway. Will you cut it out? I trust Dale with any man alive. Oh, she's a swell kid, Ted. I really think you're going to make a man out of Ted. I think we'll get there. Ted, you think you'll be going back to work soon? No, I'm not crazy about it. What do you mean? I'm not suited for this kind of work. After all, why should I be an ordinary laborer? What about me? Do you think I'm having a picnic? But I'm not complaining. Well, I am, and I'm not going back. Ted, you mustn't do that now. Just when you're proving you can stand on your own feet, you want to quit. Well, that's the way I feel about it, and I'm through. Ted, for my sake, please don't destroy the little success we've made. I'm fed up. I'm sorry, ma'am. He's been acting up again. I thought I could change him, but I guess I was mistaken. Was he drunk again last night, Digby? I'm sorry, ma'am. He was. Why don't you two stop talking about me? Oh, sorry. Wait a minute, I know you. Well, what of it? Ted J. Brown, Jr. What a scoop. Yeah, how about a story? I haven't got time. Speak to my wife. Mrs. Brown? Well? I'm from the Daily Star. We learned about your marriage, but couldn't find you anywhere. A cup of coffee, please. Hey, do you run this joint? Why do you want to know? Well, you do. Boy, oh boy. Can't you leave us alone? But don't you understand, Mrs. Brown? Your news and your husband. Say, well, listen, the public will eat this stuff up. Now, tell me, have you made any more plans? Yes. I'm getting you out of here. Wait just a minute, Mrs. Dick, Brown. Show just us one minute. Found the great out of the Pleasure, yes, ma'am. But there's one thing more I want to ask you, Mrs. Out, Brown. Sir, wait a minute. Out! Hello there, Dale. George Winston, it's good to see you. Oh, I suppose you saw the story in the newspaper. 
Too bad, Dale. Did Ted's father send you here? Well, no, not exactly. I came of my own accord. But we're both anxious to know how you two are taking it. Oh, I don't mind it so much, but Ted's taking it rather hard. Well, I'll have a talk with him when he comes back from work. He'll be here soon, I suppose. Ted quit his job. What happened? He says the work's too hard for him. Maybe he's right. Yes, his father and I were both surprised that he stuck it out as long as he did. But I guess it's all over now. <laughs> Come along, Dale. Why, you're not the kind of a girl that gives up that easily. Where's Ted now? I don't know. I haven't seen him since yesterday. I see. You don't know where we could find him. I don't know. Oh, Digby, have you any idea where Mr. Ted might be? I'm sorry to have to tell you, sir, but I'm afraid he must be at the El Toro Cafe. I brought him home from there last night. Come along. We'll find him, Dale. Is Mr. Brown here? Yes, sir. He's at the bar. We'll take this table. I'll get Ted. Hello, Ted. What do you want? Dale's here. Come on, join us. Leave me alone. My wife's in good company. Come on, Ted. Like a good fellow. I said, leave me alone. Are you hurt, George? It's all right. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Wait for me. I never want to see you again. Who cares? Leave me alone. I'll drive it home. What's the matter? I can't let him go home alone. He's in no condition. Is there anything I can do to help? No, thanks. You drive on. I can attend to him. I'm sorry things ended this way. Ended? Yes. They have ended. I'd hoped that you could do something with him. Dale, I... I'm sorry, George. I love Ted. Good luck. Goodbye, and thanks so much for everything. Dale! Dale! Digby! 
Digby. Coming, sir. Do you know where Mrs. Brown is? Why, didn't you find her last night, sir? She left me. Left you, sir? Impossible. I've got to find her, I tell you. I've got to. Oh, yes, of course, sir. Yes. Last night she came home with me, then she left. Oh, that's frightful, sir. Have you any idea where she might be? Well, she she gave me a letter that delivered to your father, sir. My father? Yes. Come on, we'll find her. Get in. Congratulations, son, on making a man of yourself. I am proud of you. A man of myself? I heard all about it. You had a message from Dale. Did she say where she was going? No, she didn't. It was, well, just a business letter. Oh, I gotta find her. I'll go crazy. Well, when did she leave? Last night, this morning. We had a fight. I see. Listen to me, son. You'll have to go far to find a better woman than Dale. I'm in love with her. I never knew it before, but I know it now. I think I do understand, Ted. We'll do all that we can. I'll get in touch with the private detective agency oh, and... Oh, Dad, we gotta find her now, today. Ted! What did you mean by leaving me like that last night? And what did you mean behaving like a perfect fool? You can't talk to me that way. I told you, I never want to see you again, and I never do. Now, you listen to me, Redhead. I'm the boss from now on. You know I could slap you. Why don't you? The idea that you could think so little of me. Well, why did you go out with him? To help you, you dope. That's a lie. Don't you dare call me a liar. I'll call you anything I please. Remember, I'm still married to you. Not for long. All right. That's the way you feel about it. We who are about to die salute you. Oh, Ted! Do you love me? No. All right. Do you love me? Oh, dear. Oh, boy, how I love redheads. <laughs> 